um, as we have seen before, nothing is clear, still clear. And one point, I thought it was very clear, uh, but at the end of my uh, talk, you'll see I'm not so sure. So the question was to know if resection should be included in the procedure for the treatment of complete rectal prolapse with the abdominal approach. So as we have, say, as we have uh, seen before, as you know, many procedures have been described to treat total rectal prolapse, and they can be separated on, in perineal approaches and transabdominal approach. And inside the transabdominal approach, you have the rectopexy with or without mesh, the resection rectopexy, again, with or without mesh. For us, as we published, transabdominal approach, as I told you, provides less recurrence and can be performed even in elderly patients. This seems clear. But, as you know, constipation and failure of rectal evacuation remain a frequent problem after abdominal rectopexy, even if they are a cause of this uh, prolapse. So, resection rectopexy, as described first by Frickman and Goldberg in Rochester, was supposed to improve these functional outcomes. And the question was to know if there are any data uh, in the, of the evidence-based medicine for resection rectopexy. So, if you look in the literature, you have to be very uh, clear and uh, search uh, all the items. There are possible advantages with the resection, maybe less recurrence, maybe less postoperative constipation, but you have to look in the papers if you find more postoperative mobility, fistula, sepsis, and more postoperative incontinence before uh, proposing this operation. If you look at the literature, there are not so many studies, and there are only two level one studies, randomized studies, which are uh, at the era of open surgery uh, with uh, very uh, few patients. And these two studies have been uh, compiled in the Cochrane Library in the meta-analysis in 2007. Some uh, level two, no level three, and many level four. This means that the value of the evidence-based medicine will not be very high. So let's uh, look at the main outcome we are all looking for is the recurrence rate. If we look at this uh, randomized study, I don't know if there is a the pointer, is the red? Yes, sir. Okay. If we look at the two randomized study, uh, you see the first one, there were only 15 patients in the resection group compared to the 15 patients uh, in the rectopexy alone. And you see the follow-up of six months. Today, it's impossible to speak of a six-month follow-up. And there were no recurrence at six months. does not mean nothing. But it was published, and it's still the reference. Again, the series of McKee uh, with only nine patients compared to nine patients. This is nothing. And they had a, a low rate, no recurrence at 20 months. Now, if we go to non comparative series, which has a, a, a low weight in this analysis, if we look, we, we, we're speaking about the Orlog uh, procedure, uh, 257, this is a great number of patients, but with a follow-up of seven months, it doesn't mean nothing. So you see the rate of a recurrence is uh, from 2.75% uh, from my co-chairman with a nine years follow-up, which means something, uh, to uh, up to 7% in the literature. Now, if we look to the resection rectopexy, you, you see that the figures are about the same, coming uh, from zero with 1% uh, mobility. Uh, and I'm uh, a bit reluctant uh, to these uh, figures because I'm not sure they are the real life. Uh, and it goes up to uh, a German series, which was a very, very good analysis, is 10.3%, and the recent series from Kim, 11% uh, with a very nice follow-up. So these maybe are the real uh, figures. So the recurrence rate, you, you see, does not seem lower with the uh, resection rect rectopexy compared to the uh, rectopexy alone. What about the postoperative complications? Again, if we go back to the randomized study, uh, you see some general uh, complication in the group of resection rectopexy with one uh, myocardial infection, 
to uh, stretch of the anastomosis, so complication re related to the resection itself, one pelvic abscess probably uh, uh, related to the resection, but uh, too small bowel obstruction due to the uh, open laparotomy. Uh, for Mackey and all, no morbidity, hard to believe. If we go now back to non-comparative studies, again, you see that the, uh, for the resection rectopexy, the overall mo mobility uh, goes from 5.7 to 20, 20, 25%. And you have some anastomosis mobility. It's quite low, but some uh, stenosis, some fistula. Uh, for uh, rectopexy alone, you have an overall mobility which seems lower, but it's not clear. Now, if we look to uh, the uh, remaining or improvement of uh, incontinence or uh, the appearance of postoperative incontinence, if we go back to the, again, to the randomized study, what we can see is that uh, nine patients out of nine were had a better continence after a resection rectopexy, and this was not uh, significantly different from rectopexy alone, and the only patient that went worse had rectopexy alone. In the other study, uh, the results are uh, about the same, and resection rectopexy uh, does not seem to make a difference. Now, if we uh, look at uh, recent meta-analysis published in 2012, if we look at uh, continence improvement after mesh rectopexy, it goes, uh, it's around 70 to 90 percent. And there is, uh, this means that this operation uh, corrects uh, incontinence uh, with a, and it is statistically significant. Now, if we look at uh, resection uh, rectopexy, you see the continence improvement is from 70 to 100 percent. And again, this operation can improve incontinence and uh, does not worsen uh, clearly. But in this uh, series of Le Show, there is eight cases of worsening continence after a resection rectopexy. What about constipation? This was, in my opinion, one of the main outcomes to uh, perform a resection rectopexy. And again, if we look at the randomized study uh, in these two small studies, uh, resection rectopexy improves uh, constipation and there, is, there are no de novo const postoperative constipation. Uh, if we look now in the meta-analysis uh, from rectopexy, uh, resection, and constipation, there is, in this meta-analysis, no clear uh, improvement with the resection. And uh, again, if we look at uh, to the uh, rectopexy without resection, you have several cases of a um, de novo and worsening constipation but it is not uh, statistically significant. Another point interesting is to study the quality of life related to uh, post-op constipation. And uh, in this study, uh, it was shown that uh, resection could improve the quality of life. Uh, this is resection, uh, rectopexy, uh, for uh, the post-op constipation. So clearly, Many studies of the literature have shown cases of worsening of constipation uh, and uh, in the meta-analysis, most resection rectopexy reported an improvement in constipation. So at this point, we thought that the resection rectopexy procedure seemed well suited for patients with a long history of constipation and a long redundant sigmoid as can be appreciated before operation or during the operation. And it was our attitude till 2006 to say if a patient has a real pre-op constipation, a long transit colonic time, maybe resection should be uh, proposed, and this is what we did. But unfortunately, my co-chairman published this paper, and he showed uh, that the ventral uh, rectopexy he described could give very good long-term functional results with a resolution of constipation in 84% of the patient. He had some explanation, but he will tell us by, him, by himself. Avoidance of posterior retail mobilization, avoidance of nerve injury, and the position of the mesh itself. 
These uh, results were confirmed by a study from England showing that uh, laparoscopic ventral rectopexy could uh, improve uh, clearly uh, post-op constipation and was a very good uh, technique. So we looked again to our results to know exactly uh, if resection uh, rectopexy still had a place. As you know, uh, we have been performing uh, all our operation with the robotic assistants for years now. And uh, uh, we have studied 77 uh, cases and we can see we used different, different techniques and uh, at first we used the Orloid technique which was the standard in France in uh, 52 patients. We used the uh, resection rectopexy in 9 patients and the more recent patient we used the ventral rectopexy. The conversion uh, rate was uh, low and the complication rate was very low too. Uh, some uh, comp perioperative complication but nothing very uh, hard, no mortality. And so we went back to the recurrence rate with uh, long follow-ups, more than 50 months, and we have a 12.7%. And what was really surprising for us, we had a 0% uh, with the resection rectopexy. We had only one recurrence with the ventral rectopexy. This is 7%, but I hope it will stay, it will decrease. And we had a very high rate, I think, in my opinion, with the alloy procedure, and we were really uh, very surprised. And uh, some this patient were operated again. So we went back to see uh, the other results. So on constipation and on uh, incontinence. And what we have seen uh, for the sigmoid resection. Uh, in the post-operative setting, we had only one patient constipated when nine patients were constipated before. So in our series, there's a very good improvement of constipation with resection rectopexy. And uh, the other techniques uh, are not so good in our hands. For the fecal incontinence, we had no worsening with the sigmoid resection. And we had very good results with the ventral rectopexy and with the orloy uh, rectopexy. Uh, that's it. So, from our experience and from the literature, what we can say is that resection rectopexy compared to rectopexy alone does not increase morbidity, but you have anyway some cases of uh, complication related to the resection. Induces a low rate of recurrence, does not increase incontinence, may improve pre-op constipation, may reduce the risk of post-op constipation, but clearly is nowadays in competition with ventral rectopexy, and uh, what we think that this uh, should be compared with this uh, technique in a well-designed trial to determine its clear indication. Thank you very much.